I, I this helped our little morning conversation, little morning coffee. <laughs> I'm like, all right, this this helps. This helps uh, to kind of cut the nerves on everything. So appreciate oh, shit, it. I need, another, I need another espresso martini. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go grab one, man. If you want to go grab one, all over the stream, go no, grab I one. I, I, there, was a, there was a thing that I heard recently where you're not allowed to like drink on stream, otherwise you get like hectically banned or some shit really? like that so i purpose dude i, yeah. I drink on stream <laughs> oh. i think it's smoking i think it's like if you're actually like toking up and stuff like that with bongs i feel like that that's like the the thing that they'll ban you or something on yeah that's fair which sucks but like i also get it but yeah no like i've definitely seen some stuff about like um streamers like being hit just because i've had like one drink on stream and shit like that or one or two drinks on stream and it's like bro why like really this isn't the night this isn't the 1920s this is a 2020s prohibition is not a thing like grow up <laughs> yeah yeah it, <laughs> weed and alcohol is like far <laughs> far legal now <laughs> exactly Wait, you, like, guys, come on, man. you guys have weed illegal in in australia do you not uh we do except for in the act the okay. act it's legal uh, which is the Australian Capital Territory, um, for those who don't know. Um, but, yeah, it's it's basically illegal everywhere, but I think that they're, tr they're planning to try and legalise it, but that's also been on the cards for the last, like, fucking 10 years. So I, who knows? I bet. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the stream today. What's up? What's up? <laughs> I forgot. I, yeah, like, I'm just so, like, into this conversation right now that I'm like, oh, yeah, we're streaming. I forgot. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's going on, Goblin? Thank you so much for the eight-month subs, man. What's going on, guys? Thank you so much for coming out and hanging with us. Uh, we've been having, like, a half-an-hour conversation already and just fucking vibing, which is awesome. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Sam, what's up? Welcome, my friend Mikey over here from the Gloom in the Corner. I know you guys have been raving about this album, and it is just crazy. I think it's the most intense album of the year, I think, is what the title is on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all for the right reasons. I think it's such a cool concept in that, and just having you on today to talk about it. Uh, just vibe out, talk some music. I think it's just going to be a fucking grand old time. So, Mikey, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Got to get that, that that famous stash going right now. Make sure that bad boy looks good for camera. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let me get my wax. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sydney, Australia, represent. Let's go. Yeah, Puke, actually. Uh, he's in the chat. He actually just moved there uh, to be with oh, uh, his girlfriend and, and family and raise a family and stuff. So, yeah, that's it's crazy. It, it must be cool living out there. I don't know. Like, I, I, I mean, I live in Canada. It's we have weird weather and stuff and i think you guys have a little so bit of weird we. weather too yeah we do our weather's fucked is it's it? just it's, yeah thank you global warming but um <laughs> <laughs> no no um no our weather's pretty cooked especially down in melbourne like where it's we say uh four seasons in a day or four seasons in an hour and we're quite literally not joking Dude, that like it'll go like from us. rain sunshine wind more wind back to sunshine and then it's it'll just rotate like every couple of hours it's just it's wild i bet um, especially in the winter and, and like uh like autumn or spring areas so i feel like that's us right now as well like even yesterday it was like just foggy in the morning it was like 20 degrees uh by the afternoon and then it drops down to like negative one and then we have frost in the morning and then tomorrow will be like a tornado warning and it's like what is going on? <laughs> and then it's blizzarding yeah, the next day after that. <laughs> hold on, man. I'm going to get my rations. Hold on. Yeah, um. <laughs> it, it's it's bipolar weather for sure. It's nuts. Yeah. But, man. Yeah. No, we, we definitely have the same. <laughs> yeah, that, that's good to know. I'm glad we're not the only one. I mean, people think we live in igloos over here and ride our mooses to Tim Hortons and stuff, so... <laughs> Wait, you don't? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it parked in the back there. It's, just... <laughs> it's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing with us. Where it's like, oh, do you guys like ride kangaroos to school? It's like, fuck <laughs> off. No, <laughs> never even thought of that. Just yeah, hopping like, in, I mean, being a Joey, and just hopping out to school. It's like, every single fucking kangaroo is a professional boxer. Don't go within fifty feet of one. <laughs> like Jesus. <laughs> oh my god i never thought of that like i know you guys have like that staple for kangaroos and whatnot but i mean ours are mooses and moose meese whatever you want to fucking call meese. it man the english language is just stupid um 
But yeah, like they're huge guy, like things. Even the deer here as yeah. well. But like I could imagine, like, do you, like is it that? I don't know what it's really like out in Australia, but like, I know you guys have like big spiders and stuff like that. But like, <laughs> <laughs> at least I'm told. Um, but like, do you guys have like wild kangaroo <laughs> hanging around there? I don't know. <laughs> no, not really. Like, not not in the metropolitan areas. Like, a lot of the metropolitan areas are not too dissimilar from like a lot of metropolitan areas in America. But if you go out into the bush, like I don't know, like an hour or two hours in, then you're gonna find kangaroos and stuff. Oh, it's the same as every other place that you that live. Cool, it's like. Man. But like, damn, you went into the bush and found fucking wildlife. It's like, wow. Yeah, I mean, it makes Shock. sense. But, <laughs> but it's just cool to hear that. Like like us, like I would hear we do deer hunting and stuff like that. But like, I don't know if that's a thing out there. But I would hate to see a kangaroo go down like that. But um, I don't think we necessarily have deer hunting or kangaroo hunting. But like, um, we definitely like, like if you go to certain establishments i can't remember which ones off the top of my head but you can eat kangaroo meat and stuff like that because for a while they were considered pests okay. um to like wildlife and stuff like that and they probably are to a certain extent probably still considered pests but um we do eat it and it is very yummy but um <laughs> interesting <laughs> um <laughs> yeah um but yeah i don't think it's like not like it's not like game hunting over in the u.s or in like canada where yeah. it's like you, you guys put like a fucking yeah, it's it's not for sport. Definitely not That's for good. sport. I know, like our gun laws are so strict down here as well. Um, yeah, so but... are ours as well. Yeah, I feel like uh, I I learned a lot about your gun laws and stuff during the pandemic. I feel like there was a lot of talks because, especially with Canada. No, now we're getting into politics. I I don't want to do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like they they started doing some ban banding uh, our AR rifles, and uh, now they're like working on handguns and stuff like that down here too. So yeah, our, no, we, our gun laws are nothing. pretty strict. We we got nothing. Yeah. But to be fair, we haven't had a shooting to be fair um since we've had the gun ban oh wow like uh, sorry uh, i shouldn't say a shooting but like a like a massacre shooting like what the u.s have yeah every 12 minutes um <laughs> very, it's very sad for sure but like it, it's nuts it, it really is and that uh, explains a lot about our gun laws compared to, to the u.s unfortunately so unfortunately yeah, yeah. It, it is a sad thing and and i know i've had this conversation before with my girlfriend it's just it's it's very sad to see these mass shootings and they, it happens a lot i can't believe it yeah um but yeah i think we'll... it was like 2019 yeah 2019 every like 20 minutes you'd wake up it's like oh there's been another uh, one like yeah it is so sad like my heart definitely goes out to all the the families and i'd be afraid to send my kid to school if that was the case and i know a lot that is oh, yeah, for a lot of the families out there so that's nuts but yeah we'll try to stay away from the politics sorry chat anyway, sorry, no more politics. No more politics. <laughs> yeah no more <laughs> that's it yeah we're here to talk about trinity the new album that just dropped on october 28th man i was so pumped we checked it out right away and it was just a crazy album how is everything going with you what's what's like some of the feedback that you've been getting so far the good the bad it, it's, it's... it's been nothing but dog shit no i'm kidding um, <laughs> no it's, it's definitely been like everything has been positive um quite like there's very very little negative things that i've seen about the album and even then like the negative side of things that i have seen have been like about very minute things like about like oh, like, oh there's too many guest vocalists it's like yeah but all those guest vocalists play like a character in the story so like i've noticed that yeah, it's, it's do you want a stage production or not but like <laughs> um but uh yeah no everything's been really positive um and it's been very very welcoming and very very cool to see um it's taken us a while to get to this point i feel like especially down here in australia but like it's very cool to see everything like kick off the way that it has of course yeah it's really neat it's cool that you say like uh th this album has the the guest spots open there for for the acting in that i don't think i've really seen that in an album before and when i was going through the album review i really noticed that as well um it I, I, for one, I just like how you guys had this in the video, and I don't know if this is just more of a sharp tone thing, but you guys actually put the people in the, the visual of, like, who's actually in it, which actually helps a lot. But, like, I noticed that, yep. too, like, you kind of hear, like, you, it's not really mentioned, but you still hear, like, uh, the other voice actors in there, and I've noticed that. I'm like, this is really cool, and, like, just the extra voices in there and stuff, which is kind of funny when I did the, the one of the first reactions, 
honestly, like, I didn't realize you guys were more of a concept band. Like, when I heard, like, more of the, the singles, that's where I was kind of getting more into you guys. I know the one song from you guys that I played uh, on the opener stream, the uh, Misanthropic song, which was... Ah, uh, yes. I loved it. They call me Sherlock, but, like, it's just a really unique song so when i got hooked into that song before you guys were signed with sharp tone i just didn't realize you guys were into the the whole story narrative side of things so it's kind of funny when i did that little narrative thing on that one reaction i was like oh that worked out great so that's just kind of a, the oh, good thing are constant, yeah no that was yeah. so sick man honestly like I, I mean, I have lots of questions. I mean, like, walk. Like, I want you to walk us through, like, some of these steps of, like, how you created this album and, like, what your, like, process was with it, if you can explain that to everyone. Oh, here we go. Oh, here um, we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Um, no, no, it was, uh, it was definitely an interesting one. Like, I've been writing... I, for backstory as well, I guess, like, I used to write stories in high school, Um and that's oh. where, like, a lot of the gloom lore kind of came from was, like, me re I, I took some of the characters from those stories and just kind of, like, repurposed the story and completely, like, started from scratch, pretty much. Um, it's still, like, very, like, James Bondy and et cetera, I guess you could say, okay. when it first started off. Um, but the story for Trinity itself has actually been around since our... F the, at least the first iterations of it have been around since like the first record of fear me and it's just kind of like evolved over time mm -hmm. i guess just because like we decided to do eps and everything in between um and it kind of just eventually snowballed and evolved into what the gloom war is now which is a very smart move i guess from our side of things because we're like um it gave me a chance to properly flesh out the story properly and like make it what it is now yeah um, and if we had done that back in 2016 2017 then it wouldn't be anywhere near of the scale of what it is now um so yeah but it, it's been a process for sure <laughs> no kidding uh, that's crazy uh, so this i'm assuming this album has literally taken years to really evolve to what the it story is the side of things yeah Oh, so yeah. how how is like the like how do you what is your writing process like like i i mean like do you start with the lyrics first i know you guys are more geared towards storytelling but like is it lyrics first story first do you write the music first then put that on top what does that kind of look like um so for the most part it's because like i'm a guitarist first before i'm a vocalist like oh, traditionally okay. like okay yeah i didn't know uh, i didn't think that funnily enough <laughs> yeah so like i always kind of focus on getting the music and atmosphere down first and then like I'll write lyrics and then continue writing the song kind of like around certain things. And then I'll put down like scratch vocals and stuff like that and then go back and change certain points in the song. If I need to, for example, if I need to emphasize the lyrics in one certain part or if I need to emphasize like the music in the background more, um, then I'll do that, etc. So like, it's kind of, it's, it, traditionally i guess like for 80 75 to 80 percent of it it goes story music lyrics that's um, really cool but music and lyrics are kind of like they they flip back and forth i guess you could say sometimes i come up with lyrics beforehand and then i'll write um the music based off of like around like whether it's sometimes it's quite literally a mosh call um <laughs> and then base it off of that or yeah but primarily yes yeah, it's, it's music then lyrics first that's pretty cool, actually. I, and especially just to hear for yourself, like, being the guitar. So I guess you write a lot of the guitar work as well, then, on this album? or I write 90% of everything. <laughs> Sheesh. So we're talking to the yeah. big guy up here. No, I, I yeah. shout out to the rest of the band, too, because, like, I think they're very talented, and especially for playing this and that. Um, I mean, like, your your production and everything is crazy as well. I That's my thing. Like... I'm a big production guy. I like the things that go into songs, and that's what I really listen to when I'm, I'm doing reviews. So, like, what what's the uh, how was it working with your producers and stuff on this? I'm kind of curious on that. With yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> funnily, like we we produced everything ourselves, like from a recording standpoint, just because of like COVID lockdowns and everything like that. But right, um, I guess. The, the funny, like, the tidbit story, uh, for lack of a better term, is we originally hit up a producer 
um, to do Trinity. And we sent him everything. Like we sent through all the demos and everything. And he was like, Hey, look, like these songs are like pretty much like solidified and they're really fucking good. There's not much more that I'm really going to be doing besides like pressing record and then adding like my own kind of like production standpoint to it. So you guys are just going to be dropping like a whole, like he's like, I'm happy to do it, but you guys are going to like, you guys have the professional capability to do it yourselves. And like, I'm an audio engineer as well and everything. And I went to uni uh. for it. Paul is, Paul is more or less the same. Who's our bassist. So, um, it was kind of one of those things. It's like, as long as we stood on top of each other when we needed to, then like, you know, um, we could pretty much do like this producer pretty much turned around and said, you guys can pretty much do everything yourselves. Why don't you just go and do everything yourselves? Um, and that producer was Mick Gordon who did the doom soundtrack. <laughs> no way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know it was Mick Gordon. Holy shit. Because yeah. we all know his production levels just, fucking through the yeah. room <laughs> he's like he's like i'm happy to do soundscapes and like do my usual thing of like what i do but like i'm not really it wasn't a thing of like i'm not really going to be adding much more or anything like that because i don't want to say that and he could have done a lot more but like <laughs> he, he didn't um, want to throw a lawnmower he's like, or you anything guys, in there <laughs> is it, do, do you want an extra russian synth in there like <laughs> from the 80s and i'm like yes yes <laughs> better than serum <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah he was pretty much just like no like you got you guys pretty much have like everything down pat i'm not gonna train like i'm probably not gonna change anything like structurally you guys have the soundscape and the synths and everything pretty much like down um you guys might as well like do it yourselves he's like and like reassess and everything of course yeah. as well like if you guys want to come back after you guys have recorded everything and still feel like you you need production work um then do it but like unfortunately we didn't have the money to do it because music videos cost money yes. but <laughs> Um, but yeah, that being said, I'd love to work with him in the future. Apparently he's, wow. he's like, he is from Melbourne originally. Apparently he used to live up in like some whoop whoop country town from <laughs> where I am in Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> he used to live in Victoria, but apparently he's moved up to Brisbane now. Um, which is much nicer because it's much warmer up there, even during the winter. It's basically oh, right like now. being in Mexico, but in the summer, in the Southern hemisphere. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah, it's fucking mad. Man, um, that is so cool. Like that that's a a compliment in itself and a half plus yeah. some. Like man, that is so cool. You see like anything in the future maybe like working with them on something? Like I mean, I think your your production was phenomenal on this and it's really cool that uh I mean, it says a lot about Mick Gordon as well for him to like not just take your money and just redo just everything run. because yeah. I think it's perfect the way that it sounds now. So I definitely love to work with him in the future. Like uh, he's, he's. <laughs> that's my doom helmet oh, up there. Oh yeah, he's one of us. <laughs> <laughs> a huge fucking nerd. Um, but no, like he's definitely one of my biggest inspirations, especially when it came to writing. Like a lot of this record, like we quite literally have. Um, I mean, I know Mick didn't write this, but like we have the E one M one riff from Doom in Ronan. Um, right before like that first verse kicks in and the let, let me show you how God abandoned me like that underneath ah, riff is the E1 M1 riff that's cool um, man so like and I, like there's so much from like like just Doom in general has influenced our story as well that's um, like neat. from the character of the Ronin and everything like I'd love to work with him in the future so like I don't I definitely don't want to take it off the cards he's a very very cool producer I'd love to see what we could come up with yeah um, 100% so, yeah. like I, I, it's just it, it's cool hearing that it really is and and i'm glad that it went that way and not uh him kind of like i mean it's i'm sure it's still to sound great but like you guys did such a good job on that but like my, my thank you my biggest thing as well like i know you 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 did a lot of this on your own which is really cool but like it, what do you do about like writer block like is there any stuff <laughs> that you guys have i'm sure there is because like you guys are probably you perfected this over years and years so <laughs> oh tell me about it i'm going through it right now no. <laughs> um no i, I think I, I have a really funny way i guess of coming of like overcoming writer's block and i guess it's i'm not sure how many other artists do it but like i have this thing where like i'll hear a song that i really really like and then i'll try and make like a copy of that in my own version mm. and generally what happens is i'll get halfway through said copy and something will click like whether it be like a riff or a melody or something like that and so 
I'll take that melody or riff and I'll completely start again from scratch. And that's a, pretty much what happened with like a lot of Trinity. Um, there's so many songs. Like, I mean, oh, fuck, what's, what's a good one that I could pull out? Like, um, like new water, for example, um, from the start was like originally like a very kind of, uh, I, I'm just going to say like Alpha Wolfie or kind of like Low to Cedar kind of bass track. And then something clicked halfway through and I was like, actually, no, I don't want to do a track like this mm. because this isn't what I was intentionally like going for originally. I'm going to do something completely left of center. And I think what kind of influenced me at least with New Water at the time as well was I was playing like a lot of Hunt Showdown and like having that menu music just come in. That's Have you played Hunt Showdown before? No, <laughs> honestly, if I play anything like, Call of Duty and SOCOM back in the day. I Hell a yeah! Of, yeah. <laughs> I'm a huge COD nerd. Hell oh, yeah. are you? Okay, sweet. Oh. I, I, I've noticed you were like a big video game guy as well, and I see yeah. the gun up in the back there. I don't know what it's from, but I saw your Instagram post on it, and it looks so fucking bad. It looks like a movie it's a, prop. It's not Gears of War. It's oh, the from okay. Gears of War. That's awesome, yeah. dude. Yeah, I, I didn't um, really play a lot of video games besides COD, but like Ever since I started get like working for myself, I just haven't had time to play video games and that. So, That's fair. yeah. Um, but yeah. So I, I was play, like, for for people who haven't played Hunt Showdown, it's pretty much like a. It's like, do you know what PUBG is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played a little or, bit of like, that. Yeah, yeah. So it's pretty much like it, it's like that, but it's based in like the Louisiana swamps in the eighteen hundreds. So it's meant to be like the end of the cowboy era, I believe. Okay, and so a That's lot cool. of. Like a lot of the music behind that is very much based around like I guess gospel. I guess you could kind of say. Like very like zeal and arterish kind of based. Okay. Um like like very like mm-hmm, 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 <laughs> like stomps and claps and stuff like that. And I was playing Bar like music. a lot of that and I was like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just purely just like like uh as hu- as many human noises uh, I guess as you can. And so that's kinda like what how New Order came about. I was like, I wanna do something that's like a mix of like hunt showdown and like a mule and alpha wolf and like all that kind of shit. And that's pretty much how new water came about. And oh, like cool. the topic of, well, the, the topics that was covered as well in new water are very like religious or anti-religious based, depending on how you look at it. Right. Um, and so for me, like that kind of just fit it perfectly. That's cool. That's like one of my favorite tracks too on that one is new order. And I love Taylor Barber. He's, he's one of my favorite, like up and coming vocalists my boy. right now. <laughs> Dude, That's that guy boy. can fucking scream. He's just a beast, but like such a really he can chill sing dude. As well. Yeah, he can sing as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think he's got a couple, a little bit of like singing stuff in there. Does he not? Or at least he does. The we pretty album? much go back and yeah, no, we go back and forth for pretty much the entire song. That's cool. Yeah. So he does like half of the cleans, which is a pain to do live. I've discovered, but like <laughs> <laughs> we didn't we didn't think through the live part. I was yeah, alive I was, the production. We, <laughs> I was at band practice today and I was like, oh, fuck, I did not think this through. <laughs> yeah, hey, you, can you sing the cleans over here? Yeah, yeah, just have somebody come up on stage and do this. <laughs> yeah, just, just have it, please. Rotate it. You just need yeah. to go on tour with Taylor Barber now. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, now, now he's got to get up and do it. So, uh, speaking of, uh, it. <laughs> of, of like, uh, obviously, you guys have a lot of features on here, which I think is so cool. So, whoever is criticizing you saying there's too many features, they are f- idiots. I think it's That's fantastic. Silly. I I think it's really cool when other artists come together. Um, and I noticed you have like a little bit more smaller names, so, not so much smaller, but like people that I don't really know. I mean, I know the bigger ones like Lauren Babic. She's from Toronto as well. Actually, she just played a show last night, and she's up in Hell uh, Mon- yeah in Montreal. I I honestly I wanted to go, but I had to prepare for this. So I'm like, okay, that's all, it's all good. We'll catch her another time. But uh, yeah, that was uh, Pandora's box was like one of my favorite ones as well. And maybe a little bit because of like Lauren Babbick was on it. But I really love the structure of that song. I thought it was fantastic. The music video to that just really drove me, drove it home for me on that. But yeah, you got the other bigger guys like you got uh, Joe Bad as well. Ryan Kirby. Like what's the process with that? Even with Rio, um, I, I'm i sure you heard that he stepped down from Crystal yeah. Lake and his mental uh, issues that are going on. But yeah, explain your kind of like your how did that all come? I was a fun. Oh, I'm sure it was fun, but <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, no, so for, like a lot of the bigger ones. 
Um, we got a I, I got a handball at Tatak pretty much like oh like a lot of the bigger ones like he's friends with or has been in the same circles with so he can like he definitely helped out with um making those connections and everything and that was a lot of fun but like oh, like a lot of the the smaller ones I guess you could say like we're all friends with oh sweet. because of, like a lot of them are like a lot of them are from like the Melbourne scene. And I guess like the big dog, (laughs) he's going to hate me for saying this, but the big dog, like of like the small ones, but also not really small ones, um, was wit. Cause I'm friends with wit because he's, he was friends. Oh, sorry. His friends, uh, with our main merch designer. And so like, we had that connection through there. So like we became friends and eventually it was like, do you want, do you want to sing on a song? (laughs) 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 You you want to sing on a song? Um, and he's like, oh, all right, I can. And he's like, are you getting me to do screams? And I'm like, no. And he's like, fuck yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, right on. That's freaking cool. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you're the first person that's asked me to do cleans, and I'm so happy. And I'm like, I'm ha- I'm just happy to oblige, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's cool. But, like, um, I'm glad, like, even Lauren was on some cleans as well. Like, I really like hearing her cleans, but her screams really did it as well. But that's really cool that you guys yeah. have friends. Because, like, even when I was in bands back in the day, I felt it was more of like, I mean, we were friends and played in shows and stuff together, but like we never asked each other to like, I feel like it wasn't a thing when I played in bands. I don't know why. It was just, you see the bigger bands kind of doing it, but that was about it. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. I think, I think there's kind of like a, I think Australia is like a little bit different because like the scene is so much like more smaller, Mm. like getting, getting people on from like our own country is like a lot easier to do, I guess, than maybe somewhere bigger like the U S or Canada. Right. Um, but yeah, no, like, like a lot of those guest features like Monique and Monica, um, and, fuck who else was there i'm gonna like my, <laughs> my sister's on clutch bless her <laughs> oh really um, oh that's cool you yeah, got no, family she, yeah, involved that's sick one. yeah no she's the one that does like all the clean not all the cleans but she's the one that does like all the female vocals on clutch um funnily enough the <laughs> um, i know we we're talking before i'm currently at a party right now but um <laughs> the the person who does Um, like all the narration vocals in from heaven to hell and gravity and like all the first like four songs and um the person who does the scottish accent or who plays caron on the album um is also here at the party (laughs) (laughs) why didn't we just bring the party into the stream right now (laughs) so everybody chilled in the background you want me to i can (laughs) Uh, but um yeah so like like a lot of like the people that we worked with who are on like the smaller, I don't hate saying smaller side of things, but on the smaller side of things, um, like we're all friends with. That's cool. So, um, yeah, it was very cool. Like I know it, it meant that like we could work like a lot more closely with them as well and everything. And it, it definitely made everything like a lot easier. Um, but f- as I said, for, for those bigger artists, um, we got tucked to kind of like middleman it, I guess, for lack of a better term sweet um but yeah like that i was still just like hey like do this if you have anything to come come back to me for like tell me this yada 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 but it was all smooth sailing so yeah um, it it sounds very very organic and and everything so it just it felt like that's exactly how it needed to be um i got one for you as well like i'm i've always been curious about this name it's obviously a little bit longer (laughs) of a band name but like where did the band name really come from i feel like that's like a a staple thing to ask a band especially for something (laughs) like the gloom in the corner is this like a nightmare Uh, that you had for like years in your (laughs) childhood like (laughs) the the dreaded fucking long band name um (laughs) the worst band name i've ever come up with for sure oh no Um, so it's a funny, I, I mean, a lot of it plays into the lore um, and everything. Like, for people who don't know, like, we focus around, like, a supernatural kind of, like, fantasy world and glooms are, like, this demonic presence and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So the name definitely comes from that. Um, but how I originally came up with the name originally and how, I guess, like, glooms kind of came to be in this universe um, was I got locked out of my old Tumblr account, like, six six or seven years ago. Um, and I needed to make a new Tumblr. <laughs> and I was just like... I was listening to uh, a lot of Devil Wears Prada because they're my favorite metalcore band. Yeah, um, another long. And name. I was also listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was also listening to another Australian band at the time uh, called I Valiance. Um, okay. And 
the the opening line to their track thrown to belial is like gloom is all i can see and it's like the hardest fucking thing ever <laughs> um but <laughs> um so that's where the name came from and i had to make this new tumblr so i just went uh uh-huh, the gloom in the corner <laughs> and i was like that's actually a pretty sick fucking band <laughs> let's go <laughs> And then 20 minutes later, I remembered the password to my old Tumblr account. And I was like, oh, well, there's no fucking point in running this Tumblr. Anymore. All right. So what was your old Tumblr name then? Oh, uh, I'm pretty sure I just ran it off of like my old Hotmail email okay. account. I think it was like Red or Ratchet or something like that. Like it was something like, you know how you make like those emails when you're like 10? It's like those MySpace names, shit. man. <laughs> the, the MySpace names? Yeah. yeah, it's complete dog shit i can't even remember like where the original myspace name came from but like effectively that's where gloom came from that's awesome man that's actually a really cool me story being, me being locked me being locked out of tumblr, tumblr <laughs> what was wasn't it like a blog site tumblr yeah, yeah i was, thought so whoop, shit man down I'm trying to readjust my thing man down here we go oh no let's see if i can reposition uh, 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 there we go <laughs> no that's a really cool story man honestly I, I just think it's really cool hearing that kind of stuff especially by someone that like writes a majority of the music on that um i got another one for you as well and then we'll kind of move on to like more like tour stories and stuff and like some personal questions mm-hmm. i don't want to take too much of your time i really do appreciate you being on here and i know you're at a party and stuff but uh i got one that might want to help i guess some smaller bands that are out there i mean like you guys have uh been around for quite some time uh, is there anything that you would kind of like recommend to like smaller bands on like how to get their name out there? What would you do maybe differently to kind of Ooh. proceed uh, yourself to being pushed yourself out there more kind of thing? I think you kind of understand what I'm saying. Um, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think like, like for people who know me and there's probably going to be people in the chat who know me, um, people know how much I fucking hate our first record, Fear Me. Oh. Um, <laughs> I hate it with a living passion. Like I have, a, I have one of those things where it's like, um, like I like going back and listening to it, to our previous music, both from like a proud standpoint and also mm-hmm. from like a fuck. I need to remember what we sound like standpoint. Um, <laughs> and I just can't listen to Fear Me. Like it's 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 kind of like listening to two different bands. Like if you listen to like Flesh and Bones and then Fear Me, it's like listening to two different bands. Right. Um, and. I think part of that I kind of put that down to is much like Trinity, but with much less experience, we did everything ourselves. And so I guess like the biggest thing that I can say, especially in the market nowadays, for lack of a better term, um, you need to be doing, not you need to be, but like there's a certain standard that is kind of been raised now Mm. for a lot of professional bands. It's like you need to drop, but unfortunately you need to drop like, thousands of dollars on a music video you need to go to a producer to get your songs looked at like you need to do xyz but at that same time there's also like a lot of producers or a lot of smaller videographers um who are hungry to take on new work and are willing to do that for maybe what is like if, if something is like ten thousand twenty thousand dollars um like there's going to be people who can also do it at like a much cheaper rate. Right. Like you're going like, to, because recording has come such a long way as myself as an audio engineer um, has seen over the last, like, let's say eight years, like the playing field for when it comes to like professional recording has changed so much. Like a lot of it, like a lot of those bedroom producers as well um, are like of, that higher standard quality now and Mm. so for me personally like if you're gonna drop money drop money into getting a producer getting like that videographer and etc and you'll probably find that there's somebody like local in your area who can do it for maybe not the same price as will putney for example (laughs) um but who can also put out like a really fucking good product and it's not just like you that you're building up to it's that person that you're building up with their portfolio and everything too. True. Um, so it, it, everybody raises the roof. Um, it raises the roof, but everybody like, ra- everybody <laughs> like roof comes is up on with fire. You. <laughs> roof is on fire. Um, but no, everybody like comes up with you kind of thing. So like whether or not it's like a big producer or small, I think like that's a big stigma too, is that like, everybody's like, I need to go to a big producer in order to get, get this results. Like, well, not necessarily because, 
the standards or the playing field has like changed quite a bit. It really There's probably has. somebody in your local area who can do the same job that you need to do for a much lesser rate. Um, but at the same time, you're raising them up so they can get to that rate as well. Right. Um, you're helping a local but, at yeah. the same time. Exactly. Yeah. So, but all in all, go to a producer, have your songs looked at by somebody that's a third party. Um, definitely put the work in, I guess, um, when it comes to like marketing. I mean, that's the biggest thing as well as marketing. Like right. there's, there's so much more that goes in with marketing. TikTok is an awesome uh, tool to be using as you yourself has definitely seen. Um, as we've seen with the Jane Sherlock on the talk thing, like it's, it's a whole, whole, there's so much more you can do to marketing than just like, hello, we are a new band. Hell okay, yeah. Here's my Facebook profile. Don't DM people with your band page. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I just had this conversation <laughs> with uh, with Matt and Chelsea on my last podcast because we were talking about it. it's like these bands like copy paste and every single like thing for marketing and that I'm like and they don't they, I feel oh, like they bro. don't even watch your channel or even know who you are. It's just like hey check out my band, hey check out my band. Yeah, I'm not a, an advocate for that kind of stuff. So that's good to know. For oh, it's sure. even worse when it's like it's, you get the face, the good old like ad on Facebook and Facebook DM of being like, "Hey man, I did you on Facebook? Can you check out my band?" It's like, please don't, please don't. <laughs> it's so cringe. Um, but yeah, those those are my two cents. All right, that's good to know. You see that band? Yeah, or uh, everybody that's in a band that's watching this, go spend your money on the right things. That's on for the sure. right things. Yeah, on the right things and. F- do your hustle research your, and everything. Hustle too. your TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Make shitty animated videos like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, honestly, I think it's really cool. I think it's uh, kind of the first thing that I've really seen. I mean, no, no, not really. I, I mean, it, it kind of reminded me of uh, your animated video was a little bit uh, on the same lines of like Veil of Maya, one of their songs. Oh, yeah. Their, their animated thing, which I thought was really cool. I mean, I'm not really into the, the whole comic book kind of scene, but like that... It really did it for me, for sure. I thought it was really cool. Oh, no, that, that video is awesome. Like, we, as, as I was saying before, I think we were having a conversation before about TikTok. Like, I used to run, like, a, or used to run, do run a TikTok for, like, both of our characters, and I quite literally just, just screen grab everything and animate everything. That's so <laughs> cool, dude. Art. No, dude, I know the editing um, process on that. But the actual, a lot. the actual animated stuff, like, that's fucking sick. I don't mean that's bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah no that's cool that's definitely cool we'll definitely move on some uh some definitely some different things here too but uh, were we good for time how are you doing for time what's the time right now uh, um we've been on for about 40 minutes yeah we're good okay we're good um so yeah i just kind of want to talk about uh, a little bit of like your tour experience i think it's a lot of fun hearing bands talk about that kind of stuff but like what is like one of your most rememberable shows like just either being on shows tours oh. and stuff like that like okay. well, someone maybe um, big that you played with that you just were like, yeah, like we fucking made it. <laughs> I mean, definitely, definitely like the the last two tours that we've done, which were the Fit for an Autopsy tour and the Era Ooh. tour, were um were both very, very cool. They're all very lovely and accommodating people. Um, but also definitely like a it was kind of weird like seeing like a shift. And we didn't kind of like I didn't realize this because the last time that Fit toured down here, they were down here with Die Art, but like they pull very much like a more how do I say this nicely battle jacket crowd. <laughs> okay, yeah, I I know what you're saying. Um, yeah, so it was very much like it, it's very much seeing like those kinds of crowds were definitely very cool, and also winning over those crowds. Um, <gasps> were very <laughs> no, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, but like, <laughs> um, no, but like, like seeing like a, a whole range of different people that like we're not usually used to seeing at shows come to like those kinds of shows and being like very loving and supporting of us as well. That's it was very, cool. very, very cool. Um, same thing with the era run. Like we weren't kind of expecting this either, but like we we're, we're a small community down here. Like we, we generally, when I go to a show, I recognize pretty much like everybody that walks into the, into the room. Cause I've been in the scene for a decent number of years now. Yeah. And, um, like those era shows, like I recognize maybe like a handful of people like at most, and they were all like sold out shows. Um, so we, we got like a very much more kind of, I hate using this word, but like normie crowd, 
for oh. lack of a better term. Okay. And so it was, it was, again, like seeing that different shift, but also seeing people like very accommodating towards it and everything too. So that was very cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, tour stories. Fuck. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of them. <laughs> like, oh, bro. Like it was, it, everything just kind of like blurs together because like I, I was saying to you before when we were off stream, like all the drives between each state are like on average ish 10 hours anywhere between like eight to 12 is the bracket that we like to say crazy. um so every single drive kind of just blurs together because there's not a lot to do on those runs and there's not a lot to see on those drives either um we have like four pinnacle things that we can look at and like that's it um and then after you've seen them like four or five times you're like oh yeah that's cool like every like for example like when we drive to adelaide um like we always go past the cracked out koala there's this ginormous fucking like 50 foot koala statue that has glowing red eyes that's and it's like good. how many how many d rugs are you on right now <laughs> <laughs> So we know we're in country we're in country Victoria when we go past it for That's lack of hilarious. better term. Um, <laughs> but um yeah, no, like tour stories, I guess like there's not like a whole heap. I guess like a nightmare story we can tell is like our classic story. Um that definitely all the Australians have heard before is what happened at Unify in twenty twenty. Um and we do you know what Unify is down here? Uh yeah, UNFD, right? The label? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah, Unified is is the label, but they used to host a festival down here called Unified. Oh, okay. Which is pretty much like it was pretty much meant to be like our equivalent to like Download or um, Reading and Leeds Festival, and they'd get like all the like the heavy hitter acts of like the Australian scene on um, the lineups and everything like that. And so we played. If, if basically like if you're gonna play a festival, this is like the festival that you yeah, need to get on. This 100%. is the festival that you need to play. Um, and so we were fortunate enough that we got to play um the Thursday night pre-party because they started doing pre-parties where like you, there was like a handful of people that were allowed to come. I think it was like a cap of like half the capacity. Um, and we played in this gigantic tent, mm -hmm. and unfortunately. 10 minutes before we were meant to go on stage, the mixing desk went down Oof. and it was very rough. <laughs> and so we were on stage for 35 minutes before we played. Thankfully, like, because it's like, because it was just like a five band bill, as said, it was kind of like the pre-party. We kind of had time to spare. It's like, we're out in the middle of the fucking woods. That's, a, that's something else as well. That's that cool. was, it was based, it was based in country Victoria. So I was like, we're like three hours from anywhere. Like nobody's going home. Like they all have to go. They, their options are go to sleep in the tent or just keep on fucking going. And so like we, we was on stage for 35 minutes before we actually got to play. Um, and like, it was, a, it's a, it's a nightmare experience, but it was a very cool experience at the same time because like we, we quite literally had like gloom chants and stuff like that. Like Nick was, Nick, our drummer was, doing like time and stuff like that to make sure the mixing desk had like, like restored itself and everything like mm -hmm. that. And people were moshing and shit like that to the time field. We weren't even playing. <laughs> and I'm just standing there on stage going like, what the fuck is going on? That's um, awesome though. <laughs> like, that's so cool to see. Like, even, like that's support. That's, mm -hmm. that is strong support. It was very, very cool to see. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really have that many, like, I mean, we haven't, I mean, I guess it's also part of the fact, like, we haven't toured enough um, to mm -hmm. have funny tour stories, but, like, but like, it, all the drives just blend together, man. <laughs> I bet, yeah, and I think we were talking a little bit more off uh, camera as well, it's like, I, I was kind of asking about, like, you know, the party scene kind of thing, and we don't really stay up and party that much anymore, because if, in your case, uh, doing a lot of stuff in Australia the drives like you can't the really drives, ri you can't yeah. risk that like, drinking and partying all night to like what drive an eight hour drive even that like you're not driving like hammered and then even that you're gonna be possibly hung over you can't risk that either because that's even a more shitty risk, drive no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. man actually actually no i can no, actually no i do have a funny one because i i redeemed myself from it and it's oh. me personally as well <laughs> all right we did a we did a we did a run back in 2019 and we all were taking shifts driving and me and Nick were like the two Deso drivers. So he did his first stint of drive 
And then we got, so that was probably like two or three hours in and I stupidly drank a Red Bull at the start of that drive. And so when I started driving, I got 45 minutes in and was like, dude, I can't drive. Otherwise I'm Uh. going to like pass out behind the wheel kind of thing. And like, we've had a few horror stories down here with various bands where like bands have crashed and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Um, Did you hear about uh, Silent Planet? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Very Very, unfortunate. But I'm glad the community came in clutch and helped them with all that stuff too. So exactly. Sorry. Continue on. Sorry. (laughs) So like, I, I, it's been, it had been like the running joke for the last couple of years that like, I can only drive 45 minutes before needing to swap. And so I redeemed myself in two ways. (laughs) <laughs> I on the on the recent error run I drove pretty much all the way back from New South Wales which is like a 7 hour stint all by myself without really needing any breaks with maybe one or two breaks in between um and the other thing that I had which everybody gave me shit for because I, I can't drive was <laughs> on numerous occasions I have parked the van flawlessly um Without appeal, reverse parallel parking too. With a trailer? Um, no, not with a trailer. Oh, we, okay. we rarely do trailers down here. We we manage to squeeze everything. Wow. In. Um, but still, reverse parallel parking on busy streets. Mm. And so, like me and Nick were talking about it, and in Brisbane, like not too long after the forty-five minute run, we had hired a van for a for another run that we did later in the year, and Paul actually like technically crashed the van he like backed it into like some center block or something like that and did 500 dollars worth of damage to the ah. van and it was a renter van too and so nick turns to me and he goes like yeah like we give you a lot of shit and everything like that and i'm like yeah, yeah i know and he's like how many times how many times has paul driven the van? And i'm like probably about the same amount of me uh, same amount as me at this point and he's like yeah exactly how many times have you crashed the van? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now who's the worst and driver like, in the van? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. <laughs> He's not here to fight himself either, like to redeem exactly. himself. <laughs> Man, what's uh, $500 fucking excess? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and they'll ding you more because it's a rental too. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Thank God we capped it, but yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. With everybody in your band, like, did you guys grow up together? Did you go to school together? Like, how do you guys all know each other? So, um, Matt, our guitarist who, who just left, he's gone to focus on uh, his career and everything. He's a very nerdy boy, and I say that very lovingly. I don't mean that disrespectfully. <laughs> Um, but he, he works in like startups and stuff like that. And so like, that's kind of like his dream career. And so he kind of got given the opportunity. It's kind of like, unfortunately that like band or career. And we're like, do your career, you fucking idiot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, he left at the, at the start of September or halfway through September, I think, or start of October, whenever it fucking was anyway. Um, but I've known Matt who I started the band with for quite a number of years. We used to play in local shows together in our old bands and everything like that. Um, Nick, who was our drummer was the same. Um, Paul was kind of the wild card. Um, he, we got him to fill in for a run a number of years ago and we're actually his first ever band. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, which is, it's a real funny tidbit because, like, he got up on stage and, like, when he performed and everything like that, it's like he'd been performing in a band, like, his entire life. Oh, he's been and practicing so, in his room for a long time, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so we're, like, his, his first ever band, but, like, I knew him through mutual friends and stuff like that, too. So, like, as I said, like, we're such a close-knit community that, like, everybody knows everybody. So, yeah. Like yeah. you are saying, like, even when you go into shows and stuff like that, it's it's very you know everybody that's in there basically (laughs) pretty much yeah no that's pretty cool man um yeah i kind of have these other questions for you as well but uh, you kind of covered a lot of them as well i guess i just kind of want to get into uh i mean there's another one from the 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 sorry the album as well is like who is your like what's your most favorite song on this album and like what who is your like most favorite person to have on this album I, I don't mean to put like spotlight on somebody, but like who was the most fun to like work with, I guess, or like excited for. And I mean, you got the big guys on there, but you got the big guys. Um, no, my, I think like the collective favorite, uh, is hail to the King. Yeah. Um, just because of the amount of 
time and work that went into that song to make sure that an eight minute song didn't sound like an eight minute song. Oh man, I hate um, long songs, dude. So when I saw it come on, I'm like, fuck <laughs> sakes, who makes these songs? But it was a fantastic song. It's a great outro to this whole album. It was just so Thank unexpected. You. So it's worth it. It was. It- like I, I've grown up on like a lot of like Avenged Sevenfold and Metallica and stuff like that as well, and like a lot of my chem too. And so mm. I come from that perspective of um, if you're gonna make an outro song or like a last track of the record, make it a fucking banger. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like that's kind of like where I was like, I was like, I really want like to cover like the story stuff as well. Like it needs to be a long song, right. and like the original times that like I was aiming for as well was so like double the length, pretty much of <laughs> what like, Hails of the it's King like the is now to this album. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and so I think like collectively, I think Hail to the King, and I think it's also from that perspective as well as that like as to like I write everything, and the boys come in and will like nitpick stuff when they need to. Hail to the King is probably the only song on the record where everybody was like there's fuck all we need to do to this song oh wow and so so for me like that was very much like oh yes thank god oh (laughs) i don't need to do anything the longest song Um, on the album but yet the least work (laughs) i think like i think paul paul said it the other day on one of the other podcasts that we did with our mates um who also are on the album um but he was just like, he heard the first demos of Hail to the King and he was just like, if this song doesn't make it onto the fucking record, I'm throwing hands. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> this song is batshit. Um, so I think collectively it's Hail to the King. Um, for me personally, if it's not Hail, it's probably Clutch. Um, mm, that's I just a good have, one. Like, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun with that song. Um, and your sister's and- on that one too, right? And Millie's on it too. Uh, she, yeah. She's a she's a footnote. No, nah, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, no, definitely clutch. I think it's just like the chaoticness of the song as well and everything too. Um, it's kind of like my my kind of like love letter to like bands like Frontier and Dillinger Escape Plan and stuff like Ooh. that. Um, and so that's where I was coming from with that song. But so, so I think that's probably my favorite. The favorite artist to work with, I'm probably gonna say Monique. Um. Just because it sh- she's on Obliteration Imminent, but she also does all of the voice acting for the character of Rachel throughout the record. Mm, so, true. like, she's the one that's like does all the voice acting in All Hell of Fury. She does it in Gravity and Behemoth, um, and a couple of other songs as well. So, I think like working like closely with her and kind of like getting because she's like the main character of the record. Really working closely with her and like making sure that that character came across the way that we wanted it to was also very rewarding and very cool. So shout out Monique. Uh, yeah, Monique. <laughs> <It's a gorilla. laughs> I, I, a quick question. I don't know obviously what she looks like or anything, but was she in the uh the Pandora's box uh music video no, or so, n- no? Yeah, no, she none of actually I was about to say none of the actors that made it that uh, were on the record made that it would have been video. cool. But that, but that was a that's actually a lie. Um oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh Monique is based in Sydney, so like feasibly, I think like we just couldn't a afford to do it, and right? B logistically figure it out. Um, the chick that plays Rachel is Nikita. Um, she's awesome. Like she was, she was kind of like a wild card as well. She got recommended to us by somebody, and she just fucking nailed it. Nice. Um, but uh, Burjo, who plays Ethan slash the Ronan, um, he's the one that does all the voice acting for Ronan on the record as well. Um, and the narrator Dookie, who's quite literally out the back right now, um, <laughs> the big six foot four ominous presence. <laughs> <Yes>. um, <laughs> he's the one that does like all the narration and everything for the record, but he's in the video for From Heaven to Hell as well. He's the one that's like in the big dark cloak and the skull mask and everything, right? Like that. Right on. Um, so he he made it into the music video too, because I was like, dude, like you live down the road just come to the fucking music video you just get to stand there and do it to him like like <laughs> no that's so it's, cool. it's not a lot he's like oh, fuck yeah but it was, it was real funny because like we we filmed like all of that stuff in like this really dark kind of like basement and like he got all of his makeup done like he was one of the first people to get like all his makeup done because like there was a lot of prosthetics and everything that we had to put on him and so for a lot of the time he was just kind of like just sitting there like not doing a whole heap and so he just <laughs> like have this habit of just walking around in this gigantic cloak with the skull mask on just like walking up behind like our bts photographers and stuff like that and scaring the <laughs> shit out of them That's awesome. said, he's six foot four like he's a big that's boy a, yeah he's a giant 
He's a giant. So, like, him just, like, walking around in this dark room in a dark cloak and a skull mask was <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> That's like, uh, the, what's his name? I think Loki Films. Uh, I'm sure you've seen a lot of his music videos, but he goes around with a dart gun on his TikToks and he just shoots people in the face with his dart gun. I could just <laughs> yep, see this I've guy just doing that on TikTok, just scaring the shit out of people. We're on sit right now. Yep. Glim in the corner. I'm just scaring people. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fucking awesome. But no, it sounds like you guys yeah. had a wicked time with that. I've only been on a set once with uh with like a, a band. I can't even remember the freaking band name, but it was like a big production band. They had the boom cameras and everything, and I was doing photography for it. Uh, I kind of got into the band photography when I, I was at a really young age, so I've just kind of fell into this kind of world like that. But yeah, it, it's it's a lot of fun to see that kind of production go into that. So it's really cool that you guys did that. And I love your music videos. I think Pandora Box is, is one of my favorites right now. And uh, From Heaven to Hell was a really cool opener to that, especially with the music videos. Just kind of introducing these characters into this. So Thank you. We, like, there's a lot of hard work and effort that went into um, those music videos. So thank you hell yeah man <laughs> Truly. all right let's dive into some personal stuff and we'll kind of wrap up with this like i obviously don't want to take too much of your time you still got a couple hours left of partying to do <laughs> exactly um so yeah like <laughs> i i think this it might not uh kind of go towards your your album or anything but like you as a musician i think it'd be kind of cool to ask these kind of questions but uh mm -hmm. like for you being in the music scene for you know obviously in australia and you've seen people kind of uprising on the internet and that but like what's a small band do you think that deserves more attention out there relica every band on this record um <laughs> okay i don't know who that band yeah, every, is sorry. every 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 small band on this record so uh relica last martyr um fuck who else is there uh crystal as well she's based in the u.s but um okay and <laughs> Kane Hill, just to piss off wit. Um, <laughs> 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 They've been um, getting some attention, though. No, they have, yeah. I've been following them for years. That's but um, cool. uh, Also, I want to give a shout-out to Illusion from Sydney. Um, They're a very, very cool, Thorlish kind of up-and-coming band. I feel like you would fucking love them. Ooh, there you go, Chad. Um, Line me up for some more reactions on that. <laughs> hell yeah. Um, but they're very cool. Like, the, like a lot of bands are doing like the Thorlish kind of sound now, and they do it in their own very kind of unique way. Yeah. Um, and it's very, very, very cool to see. So shout out Illusion. Nice. I love it. I love it. Like, and there are like a lot of local stuff too. So it just shows that you're just more into the local scene and yourself. And and I feel like that's the vibe that I get with uh, like Australian bands. I mean, you guys, we were talking about this morning, me and my girlfriend, it's like Australian bands are just fucking killing the metalcore scene right now. So yeah, it's insane. So uh, being on top of like tours and stuff and with this band, like, is this your full-time gig? Or are you just doing like more recording stuff on the side to like pay bills and now like what, what's, uh, what's that kind of look like for you in, in transition to signing with uh, Sharp Tone and everything? Um, so yeah, we all still hold down like full-time jobs yeah. pretty much. Okay. Um, I work, I work at a liquor store or a bottle for those okay. Australians in the chat. Um, yeah, I work there. I've transitioned between a couple of bottle in my time. Um, but yeah, Nick is a dish hand for a high class restaurant. Um, and Paul, who has the coolest job of all works on a air force base. Fixing oh, planes. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Yeah. All right. So yeah, he, he's putting the money in the band then. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I have a couple of those buddies as well that I know that work in that field. I'm like, oh yeah, they make some good good coin. <laughs> well, they, they make some bank. Yeah. He has a mortgage and everything though, so how much he actually can put in. <laughs> Dude, and I've been hearing the housing prices down in your area too is just as bad as uh like the Toronto oh, area here. So Yeah, don't yeah, don't get me started. Me and Johnny from Nate and Johnny, we talk about the housing market quite a bit, and he's like, "Man, oh, I don't Sydney, know what's... Sydney's fucked. Like, see, uh, straight up, like Sydney is fucked. Nobody wants to live in Sydney anymore. Like, <laughs> it's like everybody Toronto that I talk right to is like, yeah, it's fucked. Melbourne is not too bad, I guess, in the grand scheme of things, compared to Sydney. But yeah. Sydney is fucked. <sighs> it's wild." That's nuts, man. Well, I'm glad you guys like at least have a roof over your head. Like, obviously, we're all grateful for like that kind of stuff. So. 
Um, but yeah, other than that, some more personal stuff. Like, uh, what's on your like your playlist rotation right now? What's your go to to listen to music? What's on my playlist? Is it, is it still um, like metal music, or do you like? I, I did an interview with uh, Chris Turner, and his is like not metal at all. So I'm just kind of curious to see what you're at. <laughs> um, I I do listen. I, I do listen to like a lot. I try to get through a lot of new releases as I can. Mm-hmm. Um. I also listen to like a lot of cinema tra- soundtracks and stuff like that as well. Like I was doing the garden for my mm-hmm. girlfriend the other day, and I like chucked on, uh, what was it the the haunting of Bly Manor? I chucked on the soundtrack for that. Okay. Um, yeah, so I just sat there doing the gardening, like pulling out weeds and stuff like that, listening to some really dark melancholic shit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like a lot of soundtracks and stuff like that too. Um, I- I'm definitely not as up to date as what I would like to be anymore. I definitely listen to like a lot more podcasts and etc. Right. Um, but yeah, that's generally my rotation is like all the new metal releases and then um, soundtracks. <laughs> hey man, that's 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 what's up um if you could uh if you could put together your own like band with whoever you want in the music world what would it be like who would you pick to like build a band oh, oh yeah your dream band being like ryan kirby on vocals like chris turner on like throw it all out there like who are your like favorite uh, artists right now that could make a, a sick band um uh, we'll, we'll keep it simple. We'll keep it to metalcore. <laughs> okay. I want to keep. Uh, I want to do like somebody like Storm Stroke, uh, who was in the last ten seconds of life. Okay. Um. Uh, it's like Solar Sims era, last ten seconds of life. He's a huge vocal inspiration for me. Oh wow. Um, it'd probably be like him or Greg Percuccio from the Dillinger Escape Plan, and then I'd get. I would probably get Tuck on clean vocals because I love his clean vocals. Bro, the new um, Pepper King album was fire. <laughs> when I heard Tuck singing, I'm like, I was mind blown. I, like, I loved it. His his voice. I was saying this to him like not too long ago, but his voice was what got me into Fit for a King when they dropped Young and Undeserving. Oh wow. Um, yeah. So it was real funny, like, when we had that first meeting together and I got halfway through and realized who he was, and I was kind of like, I'm just going to stop because I'm, I'm going to fangirl. <laughs> um, and now we're great friends. So <laughs> No, that's cool. He drops um, in my comments and stuff all the time, and I think it's really cool. Hustle Crow. <laughs> shout out Hustle Crow. Yeah, he's a dude. He's um, a really, and the bass swings are just insane. I don't oh, even know. Nuts. What's his record? I, I don't know if he's in the chat right now. <laughs> it's probably got, it's got to be probably, like, eight or something like that. Like, I think row. it's... I think he's sitting around eight. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, fuck. Who would I get on guitar? <laughs> I know it's a tough question. I'm sorry to put you on the spot right now. <laughs> we'll, we'll go. We'll go. Oh, more Dillinger Escape Plan. We'll go. Uh, oh, actually, no. I, I reckon we'll we'll go for. Uh, oh, actually, that's a really cool combination. We'll go. Uh, Ped from Frontier and Ben Wyman from Dillinger Escape Plan. All right. Just because, like, they're both from the same world, and it would, I think, like, the two of them merging together would be mm. really fucking cool. Um, and then, I mean, Tuck's already covered bass, so, like, he's fine. <laughs> yeah, he's singing um, and playing bass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on drums. I mean, uh, Old Mate from The World Alive is kind of, like, the go-to, isn't it? But probably probably Craig Reynolds, I'd probably say, on drums. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, he's he's a fucking phenomenal drummer, and like his work really does shine on the new Stray album, I think. Um, and then everything is produced by Mick Gordon, just to fuck everything up just a little bit more. <laughs> that actually, that'd be really cool too. I mean, I still can't imagine your album being mixed by him and everything, but yeah, that, I, that's, it would be wild. I think that's the highlight of this. So like, that's really fucking cool that like he just tells you guys like no you're good you don't need me i think that's just <laughs> no <phenomenal>. you're good <laughs> <laughs> um so i know you're a vi- bit of a video game nerd and stuff like that but like what are you playing right uh-huh. now what do you what is your go-to on your downtime okay so uh this is a perfect question actually because i've just played through a number of games um i just re i mean all like my all two go-to for horror especially like right now over the last couple of years has been dead space um 
I fucking love that franchise, and I'm so glad that it's coming back. I think I, I just, saw I a YouTuber <laughs> do some videos it. on it. Is yeah. it that Caliper guy or whatever? I think he plays it. I think so, yeah. yeah. It looks really neat. Like, I don't play, like, kind of, like, horror scary walkthrough game. Is that what it is? Is that the same game I'm like, thinking of? It's, it's basically, like, have you ever played, like, Resident Evil 4? Uh, no, I feel like my girlfriend might have, yeah. but <laughs> so it's basically like they, they took like the over the shoulder stuff from Resident Evil Four and like made it so much more scarier. And I was saying to um Sean from Metalcore Nerds as well, actually, that if I didn't play uh Outlast and Dead Space, I would not have the mental backbone to be able to endure horror movies or anything of that oh, caliber wow. that I do now. Um playing it as like a teenager. That shit was fucking terrifying. Um, so <laughs> shout out Dead Space. I just recently played. I I, fu- I finally finished like Dead Space three because like in in the series it was kind of like one and two are like notable horror fucking games. Okay. And and then Dead Space three AA were like, no, we want to make this a co op shooter, bro. And it's dog shit. <laughs> oh um, no, they just ruined it. <laughs> no, it's, it's 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 not that like when you play through it on solo, it's it's not that bad. Right. Um. Just because, like, they the way that they kind of did it was like, if you're solo, like, you're solo. So it kind of does feel still feel like a Dead Space game, um, but just like watered down effectively. Um, what else? Well, I played through another horror game, which was Condemned Criminal Origins, which is like an old, 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 old game from like 2006 or seven, I think. Um, and then I've been smashing Modern Warfare 2 so hard. Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, I, I'm I, I'm I'm also one of those people that's like a huge fan of like the story and everything that's in the Modern Warfare franchise too. So like seeing all of like my favorite characters from quite literally when I was like 10, 12 years old, like come back in like a new light that's was cool. really fucking cool. Um, and seeing them like in a as to like a brand new kind of like uh, rebooted light as well was really fucking cool and it was very nostalgic for me. Oh, yeah. Um, playing through the campaign, but also like I just love playing like the multiplayer and everything of it too. So and, and yeah, and it's just an inspiration for you too, just to write new stuff and that. <laughs> yeah, sense, exactly. Uh, which I think is really neat, and you could kill two birds with one stone. Like it's freaking awesome. Or it, I don't know if you listen to tra- or watch Trailer Park Boys, but you can get two birds stoned at once. You know that one? <laughs> yeah, I, I used to be like a big Trailer Park Boy fan. Um, but yeah, I got, I'll kind of wrap it up with this one. And then uh, if you're down, I would love, I've been saving Behemoth video to react with you. If you want to jump on and do that reaction with me, sure. and then we'll wrap it up after that. But uh, last question I kind of have for you as well is uh, the, the stress and strains on your mental health, like touring and stuff like that what are you doing to like kind of help get through those things uh like you do like meditations and stuff or like kind of like what's been going on in your head lately with that um not a lot <laughs> that's good that's good yeah, <laughs> i mean uh... no like we're, we're pretty chill on the road like we're, we're like it's always like a group of us that's on the road so we just like fuck with each other nothing too hard um but like, yeah, no, like we, we don't really have like any mental stresses on the road or anything like that. Like we're pretty, like if we're, thankfully like we're a band where we can actually like talk to each other if anything's going on. Good. Um, like we're like friends before everything else as well. So like we're very comfortable talking with each other about like any stress or anything like that, that we need to. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, I guess like the, when the post tour depression kicks in, this is when I like dive into video games and stuff like that and just kick it back up. It's like, if, if I haven't played through something, whether it be like new or old, like I'll just dive myself back into that and kick it back out of that. Yeah. Um, I understand that. Yeah. Or I, I guess anything along those kinds of lines. So like, I'm not too, we're, we're not too stressy depressy, um, for lack of a better term, but yeah, we, we keep it pretty cool, calm and collected here. No, that and that that's good. I'm I'm glad for that for sure. Um, I'll kind of uh, open it up to chat. Like, if you guys have any quick uh, questions here while I set up uh, the the music reaction here, uh, feel free. I don't know if you have any other random stories you want to talk about. I got this set up, but I did have it set up, and then I restarted OBS. I'm like, oh shit, my fucking layers are. Oh no! Up. <laughs> Classic fucking OBS. Yeah. Fucking. Um. Uh, let's see. Any fu- we had a we, we were talking about it today because we were uh, arguing with our fill-in guitarist, um, <laughs> and uh, we were talking about we had this we had a ten-minute video, um, which we I probably should upload at some point, um, 
about how whether or not cheese platter is a dessert or not. Um, <laughs> my girlfriend okay. is currently nodding at me through the window of my studio, being like, "Yes, it is. A, it is a platter. Yeah, it, sorry, it is, a, it is a dessert." Wait, what does chat um, think? Chat is cheese a dessert platter, or is or uh, what's the other option? I mean, like, I feel like it's just more of a, an appetizer snack kind of platter thing. So okay, so th- this is this is the argument that we have. Right? <laughs> okay. Um. So there are two different there are two different types of cheese platters. There's a charcuterie board which has like meats and um, cheese and biscuits and everything like yeah. attached to it, and that's very much like an entree or an appetizer kind of thing. No right. argument there. Um, a dessert cheese platter is what comes with like figs, fruit. Like it comes with a whole different array of cheeses. It might come with like a sweet cheese or like a savory cheese. Sometimes it comes with like a little bit of chocolate, but it's pretty much offered as an alternative. Chocolate. We to, don't have like, chocolate anything on our charcuterie like... boards. <laughs> I'd yell at my girlfriend because we make charcuterie <laughs> boards all the time. No chocolate on there. <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much like that. That was pretty much like the argument. But we had a ten minute argument about it, and both. <laughs> Everybody, um, was like to Matt. Sorry, Matt. Um, <laughs> was like, no, a cheese board or a cheese platter is a dessert. Like, I, I work I, at that time. I work in a restaurant, bro. Like, <laughs> I know I, I work in a fine dining restaurant. I know what's on the dessert menu. It is a dessert. Like, do not argue me. Argue oh, with wow. me like this. This is Paul, crazy. Paul, who's Italian, was like, bruh, it is not a charcuterie board. It is a fucking dessert. Like. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can, I can feel the tension. <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah, um, there we go. That's, that's a funny story. Um, that is a funny story. Chase butter is a dessert. dessert. Dessert chase butter is a dessert. <laughs> Fuck off if you tell me otherwise. <laughs> I mean, I guess I just haven't had it in that dessert form to, I guess, maybe call it a dessert. But I, I when you started saying like, yeah, the fruits and the chocolates and stuff like that, yeah, it can definitely be. It could be both, I guess. <laughs> it can definitely be both. No, right cheese on, is such man. a malleable thing. Hell yeah, <laughs> that's funny. All right, sweet. I mean, I'll rip this off of uh, our, our the video that I have recording on here. But chat, let's get this geared up for uh, for a video. You guys ready for this shit? Oh wait, oh, sorry. I guess you kind of have to hear this as well. So let me. Uh, I'm gonna share my uh, my screen here, which you'll be able to hear as well. So yeah. on Discord, there. I just uh, if you click on the yeah, uh, I can say it. Perfect. I'll just do a little testing. Just make sure you can hear it. I don't know how it's gonna. Oh, you have your he- earphones in. Perfect. Do you hear that? Mm-hmm. Perfect. 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 All right, we're all set up then. All right. All right. Let's fucking gear up for a video. 